What do you think is the main mystery of Mars? Is there life there? It's a good attempt, but it's rather not a riddle, but a task that scientists have to solve. Is terraforming Mars possible? This also looks more like a research subject than a riddle. The red planet has many secrets like this that humanity has yet to get to. But the main mystery associated with Mars does not lie in the field of science. It lies in the field of psychology and money. Why the hell are we even studying Mars? Will there be any sense for humanity from the red planet? And wouldn't it be easier for us to spend money on solving earthly problems? It's the questions that are the most important mystery of Mars. Can the planet give people at least something that will allow them to say, yes, we studied Mars and poured billions there for a reason. We will try to find the answer to this question in the next couple of minutes. Let's start with the simplest. Since the beginning of time, people on Earth have been fighting for territories and resources. And Mars has a lot of territories to offer. Although the red planet is smaller than Earth, but due to the lack of oceans, there's a lot of land on it. Actually, even a little more than on our planet. Without Antarctica, the land area on Earth is 134 million square kilometers, and the area of Mars is almost 145. If there were such unoccupied territories on Earth, we would go to World War III without having time to blink. On Mars, you can comfortably accommodate all Earthlings, by the way provided that somehow it will become habitable and it will be possible to fly there cheaply. At the moment, Mars is a lifeless desert, which without protection due to low pressure and lack of oxygen, will tear apart a person's internal organs within two minutes. But have such obstacles ever stopped us? People pump oil from the Arctic, where a person will not live long without special equipment either. And expensive ships for the development of the Arctic also need to be built. So consequently, the murderous territory of Mars can become very attractive. If there are enough resources there, are there any life on Mars? Let's figure it out. Let's start with the elementary, the basis of our civilization, despite rare earth metals and all kinds of semiconductors, is still the good old iron, aluminum, and other metals. Are they on Mars? Yes, and a lot of it. The red planet was formed from the same protoplanetary disk as the Earth, belonging to the same terrestrial class of planets. And in the same way, Mars was bombarded by meteorites that brought rare elements. Titanium, sulfur, chlorine, nickel, aluminum, and other vital resources are available on the red planet. Silicon dioxide is almost the most common resource on Mars. On Earth, it's used in the production of glass, ceramics, concrete, toothpaste, and even food additives. We won't even mention iron. Everyone knows that its oxides give the planet a reddish hue. And finally, the most important thing is that there is no Greta Thunberg on Mars. And ore bodies can be safely opened even with thermonuclear charges without worrying about the consequences. According to Forbes, the extraction of the simplest materials in North America alone bring in $5 billion a year. And there's a strong desire to note that since Mars can be hammered with atomic bombs and collect ore with bare hands, it should be profitable. But unfortunately, everything is a little more complicated. After all, what to do with this Martian ore? Taking her to Earth is insanely unprofitable. And it's not even about money, it's about banal physics. To send one kilogram of something to Mars, you need to burn about 225 kilograms of rocket fuel, which suddenly is also created from resources. And therefore, a kilogram of what the rocket carries should be so profitable as to outweigh 225 kilograms of fuel. Are iron ore, aluminum, and silicon dioxide such resources? Of course not. There are plenty of them on Earth. And no matter what catastrophe environmentalists predict, they'll not end soon. And even if they run out, the ratio of fuel to payload will not go anywhere. So to carry ore from Mars to our planet, even in the long term, is pointless. The situation can be corrected in two ways. Firstly, to carry not ore, but something rare and insanely expensive. For example, some Californium-252. There are only a few grams of it here on Earth and the price for one gram reaches $10 million. In this case, the question will disappear by itself. The queue for the purchase of a couple of tons of Californium-252 from Mars will be lined up so that any fuel costs will be beaten off. In theory, it's quite profitable to bring to Earth some osmium with a price of $200,000 per gram or some platinum. But the trouble is that right now, there's no information about the deposits of something precious on Mars. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory shared statistics of elements found on the red planet. And so far, 
Everything we find is on Earth as well, and in sufficient quantities. There are, of course, some good news. Not that anyone expected to see gold lying on the surface of Mars. Precious metals are usually heavy and should be searched for inside the planet. People have not yet brought such technologies to Mars, but given the similarity between the red planet and ours, the mood in terms of Martian jewels is pessimistic. For example, Elon Musk agrees with this. In his opinion, Mars will not become a mining planet because it has nothing to surprise Earthlings with. But this does not prevent Musk from declaring that a colony on Mars can become profitable. How exactly? To do this, let's go back again to simple resources. Yes, you'll not be able to make money on them, but with their help, it's quite possible to make a colony self-sufficient. Several teams are successfully working on the issue of mining on Mars. Swampworks, for example, has already built prototypes of devices capable of converting Martian dust into fuel. NASA has built a Rasor robot that collects regolith to use it in a 3D printer and print any material of interest to the settlers. Zinc, nickel, iron, aluminum, and the same regolith, according to Musk's calculation, will be able to make the colony self-sufficient in 20 years and 1,000 visits of Starship ships. By that time, factories producing ceramics, glass, and any materials will be built. Also, the extraction of water will be established, because there is quite a lot of it in a state of ice in the deep layers of the soil of Mars. Oxygen can also be synthesized. And theoretically, even modern science allows the creation of an autonomous Martian colony. This, according to the calculations of Musk and NASA, will be the first step towards the paycheck of the Mars mission. Because after reaching self-sufficiency, the colony will start earning. How exactly? By selling intellectual property. To understand the principle on which Musk's calculations are based, you don't need numbers and dry statistics. Just imagine that a colony that costs a trillion dollars finds a living bacterium in the Martian soil. Guess what will happen on Earth? There will be a huge queue of billionaires and entire states that would like to buy it. Some even buy NFTs for millions. And the first Martian bacterium and the results of its study will immediately be bought for billions. What if this bacterium turns out to be the key to the discovery of new penicillin? What if she has incredible resistance to terrestrial viruses and will help to create a giga vaccine? Pfizer and Moderna's net profit in just one year of COVID vaccine production amounted to $34 billion. Hypothetical colonizers of Mars, who will hold a patent, will be able to earn very, very much. And there's a potential for earnings in the natural sphere. One gram of Californium-252 releases 2.4 billion neutrons per second. This is equal to the power of a small nuclear reactor. But as we've already mentioned, the colonizers of Mars will not be constrained by environmental laws when working with ore, and they'll be able to search for unique ore, conduct experiments with isotopes, and rate Mars on an industrial scale. It is possible that on another planet that is developed in different conditions from Earth, an element will be found that will change our ideas about physics or chemistry. And again, such work will be estimated at billions. Many will say that these are just dreams, and we need something more realistic. This is true, but there are a lot of options here. Three fragments of lunar soil, ranging in size from 1 to 2 millimeters in 2018, were sold at auction for $855,000. Imagine how much those who wish will give for Martian soil. Yes, and different from the earthly one. NASA is spending billions of dollars on rovers that can deliver something from the red planet to Earth. And even then, the soil will fall into the hands of a couple of laboratories. And there are millions of people who want to work with Martian dust on our planet. And there are enough simple collectors who can dump a seven-figure sum for a Martian stone for the collection. And even if there's a lot of soil and its value drops, Souvenirs from Mars will definitely be appreciated on Earth for a long time. In general, there are many hypothetical options for the Martian colony to make a profit. And Elon Musk's confidence that Mars is profitable does not look like a PR trick. The only question is investment. After all, many can say that money being spent on space and the red planet can solve all earthly problems. We'll not argue with this. But there are really a lot of people and organizations on Earth in need. But still, Let's take a look at the numbers. In 2013, the film Gravity was released, which earned an Oscar and excellent reviews from the public. Its budget is $100 million. In the same year, India launched the first Mars Orbiter satellite. He's been working successfully to this day, collecting both photographs and data on the geology of the Red Planet. The cost of the entire mission, including the creation of the satellite and its dispatch, is $73 million. 
That is, it turned out to be cheaper to send a satellite to Mars than to create a movie about space. Of course, this is immediately countered by the fact that the film Gravity earned $700 million and was profitable. We have nothing against cinema and very glad that it popularizes space. But still, first of all, we note that as we have already mentioned, Mars is also able to make a profit in the future. It's just not such a fast process. And secondly, the fact itself is important that by earthly standards, a Martian satellite is not expensive. This is not $73 trillion and sending humanity to the Middle Ages. It's only $73 million, which is equal to the budget of an ordinary Hollywood movie. And in return, scientists receive extremely valuable information, which will instantly pay off with just one scientific discovery or breakthrough. It's only a matter of time. Let's raise the stakes and talk about the Perseverance rover, which successfully colonizes the Red Planet. The total cost of this program is $2.7 billion. The amount seems huge, but looking at purely mundane expenses again will not be as impressive as it seemed to be. According to Forbes calculations, hosting the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar cost the country $220 billion. Even if the figure is overestimated by half, it's still about 50 rovers. No one is saying that it's necessary to stop the football championships and put money on Mars. On the contrary, we're simply defending ourselves and showing what tiny budgets Martian missions have in comparison with terrestrial entertainment projects. And if we say that some money should be spent on solving earthly problems, then space is far from being the first candidate for cutting costs and directing them to a good cause. Now, let's raise the stakes even higher. According to Elon Musk's estimates, the price of a turnkey colony on Mars ranges from $100 billion to $10 trillion. The spread is significant, and for example, we'll take the figure in the middle. Let's say you can meet $5 trillion. This is a mind-boggling amount, but you don't need to spend it all at once. The expenses will stretch for 10 to 15 years while the colony will be prepared and resources will be transported. It will turn out somewhere between $400 to $500 billion of expenses per year. This is about the GDP of Poland, Austria, or Iran, and about half the annual U.S. military budget. The total state of all the billionaires of the planet is estimated by Forbes magazine at about $10 trillion. Most of this money is virtual and invested in factories and production. But nevertheless, in a simple comparison, the cost of a colony on Mars does not cause a shock. The total military budget of the Earth is $2 trillion annually. And this is with the fact that we have not found any aliens and are not at war with Venus. This money is spent on internal disassembly. Simple mathematics suggests that the world only needs to reduce military spending by a quarter to create a Martian colony from scratch. This is possible even with modern achievements of science and technology. Of course, the colony will not be able to recoup the invested billions soon. But do not forget the decisive factor, insurance. Every person on the planet pays medical and other types of emergency insurance. No one has any questions about this, and everyone understands that bad things happen. But they also happen in space. And you don't have to go far for an example. Just go to our historical channel and read about the consequences of the collision of the Earth with an asteroid. It killed the dinosaurs and caused a global extinction. Moreover, by cosmic standards, the event was quite ordinary. Every day, astronomers observe collisions of entire galaxies, asteroid arrivals on Jupiter, and other universal catastrophes. Sooner or later, humanity will face the question of galactic insurance. And no matter how expensive it is, if we're talking about the survival of humanity as a species, the financial question disappears. It is not a fact that such insurance will be useful in our lives or in the lives of our great-great-grandchildren. But the whole experience of mankind's exploration of space shows that the question, will it boom or not, is not even worth it. Sooner or later, the Earth will face a catastrophe. And the only question is whether humanity will have a plan B by that time. So the answer to the main mystery of Mars most likely sounds like this. The Martian colony has very little chance of coming out in a profit. The red planet most likely will not offer us resources or the possibility of permanent trade. However, Mars still has ways to earn money, and at least theoretically, the colony can reach self-sufficiency, even if this requires huge investments. However, these investments are not so big, even by modern standards, and the possibility of ensuring humanity from extinction, in our humble opinion, makes the colonization of Mars a noble cause. What do you think? 
leave your opinion in the comments. And that's it for now. See you again, friends.